you have clicked on that thumbnail either because you are black mother or father to a black married to a black friend to a black neighbor to a black or even you just want to know you're highly welcomed either reason is all good we know that knowledge is power so let's empower ourselves as we look in to see how we can even improve black lives better now the adage says in my place if you're pointing one finger to someone look at me one two and three are pointing back at me so if you're pointing one finger at someone three are pointing to you so while we are pointing and blaming and apportioning blame let's look inwards how can we improve our outcome now let's get right down to business don't forget subscribe yes our residency requirement in julie city is to click on that red subscribe button below and the notification icon so you can get notifications for all my uploads the one thing that this pandemic has brought to light is the fact that as a black person we are disadvantaged health wise disadvantaged social wise disadvantaged environmental wise and even psychological wise and now before we begin to apportion blames we need to put value on ourselves so that we can be valued remember i'm not talking about another person before you come for me I am talking, I am one of the black lives and I'm here to say, yes, we matter. But there are life saving habits that we can incorporate in our daily living to make our lives even more valuable. Be it Africans in diaspora like me or Africans in Africa, all of these factors apply to us. The I will start by the first thing, being a nurse, obviously, I'm most attracted to health. According to World Health Organization, one out of every three African or black race person is prone to a long-term health condition like hypertension, diabetes. Yes, hypertension and diabetes. They are silent killers. I'm saying this both out of personal experience and what I hear in the news altogether. So don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking yes. about. I'm what saying can we do? Our lifestyle is huge in making a difference. Now, when I say diabetes, yes, we might not have much control over type 1 diabetes, but type 2 diabetes has to do with our lifestyle. And high blood pressure also, apart from hereditary, has to do with our lifestyle. You might say, oh God, I inherited it. Yes, but hereditary sometimes can be looked at in terms of those life choices our parents and our parents before have made that has made us more susceptible to that particular condition and another thing that this pandemic has shown is that you're not living just for you you are living for the next person you're living for the next generation the choices i make my children will inherit it yes and it will impact on them and their generations to come so as a black person as we make choices on habits on foods on lifestyle can we bear in mind that we are also influencing our generations to come? Yes, so dirty, dirty, no, they kill Africa man. I will put the translation there, dirty, no, they kill Africa man. Ah, no, in these days, dirty is now civilized. Dirty kills Africa man. So if the uh, World Health Organization or research or the medical personnel says, wash your hands, please don't say dirty, no, they kill Africa man. Can you please comply first? And if anything goes wrong, at least you know that you did your part. So the thing that the killer frame command should be off our dictionary and our adage and our phrases from now henceforth so that we can add value to ourselves. Because, yes, we matter. Another thing is the bad diet. Yes, bad diet and how and when we eat our diet. We are naturally blessed. Yes, blessed with a lot of fruits, vegetables, seeds, and name it. But when i went to africa four years ago there are some traditional foods that i was so looking forward to eating when i got to africa but they are no longer readily available because people have moved on to imported kind of foods and their fries and fatty foods that actually damage the body leaving behind those fresh vegetables fruits seeds and simple starch and all that and all that that are most healthy for our daily living 
we are inviting hypertension we are inviting diabetes we are inviting obesity i'm not guilt free i am also saying this to affect me so that i can hear as well as i am promoting this information so please i'm not a saint sitting here trying to point fingers i'm also taking notes i was really sad trying to make this research to find out the outcome that an average african has in terms of not just for what people uh, situations have put us in but what we as individuals have also put ourselves in so if you pick the right choices go for those natural organic vegetables that we have readily especially if you're listening and you're in nigeria you don't have to live on the fast foods no go to the market get yourself decent vegetables get yourself decent seeds simple carbohydrates yes make it eat it you are actually eating life you're improving yourself you're adding value to yourself you're improving your outcome if you choose correctly all of this hypertension diabetes you'll be able to put it at bay we can still consume those things that we're used to but if we can change it up a bit take less carbohydrates more vegetables our five a day fruits and less of fatty foods or make fatty foods and fast foods occasional like chips and all of that make it an occasional and a celebratory thing that way we're extending our lives and the time that we eat them there is a uh, bread and tea in the morning bread is already processed carbohydrates yes bread and tea in the morning in the afternoon there is a uh, eba or gari and soup heavily loaded you understand what i mean yes and then in the night there's another rice for bed or dinner rice and stew for bed or dinner we have literally bombarded ourselves with a lot of carbohydrate during the day and probably that dinner we are taking it a bit later than seven o'clock and then after that we go to sit down watch television and go to bed that is really not a healthy way of eating and time of eating if you can please eat our high starchy foods during the day when we are most active and then eat it earlier than 7 p.m or 6 p.m before and have enough time at least four hours for our bodies to deal with it before we go to bed that we actually truly improve our outcome remember like i said i am not guilt-free i'm also learning and that's why i always encourage us to leave comments so please as you're watching me leave your comments leave your contributions leave your suggestions below let's learn from our, one another nobody is a perfect custodian of knowledge we are all trying to improve our lives and add value to our black lives binge drinking yeah i know that there are people who will sit down and as a result of peer pressure take five six bottle of uh, beer and stout and guinness all of that put together remember you're not helping yourself yes you might be young and able right now but in a few years time the results will begin to comfort in the body and that is where the hypertension and diabetes and obesity and all of that comes about i cannot emphasize enough on the need for us to exercise please make intentional exercises i know you can have a driver if you're living in africa yes i did live and yes you have driver that drive you to everywhere for those of you who can afford one but please sometimes it's okay to leave the driver leave the car take a bit of a walk please don't tell me that it's a bit unsafe right now you can walk around okay walk around your compound jog in your compound if you have to there are ways to exercise yourself if you can cycle and it is safe to cycle please cycle don't look at bicycle as a poor man's thing please let's improve our outcome engage in exercises remember if you already have a medical condition it's important to take it easy and consult your medical per personnel before you get into overactive exercises i'm not talking of overactive exercises here i'm talking about moderate exercises that will help our body deal better with what we put into it and increase our productivity and longevity as well i'll draw us back to blood pressure again one out of every three adults in africa is prone to high blood pressure as the world health organization research shows that is a really sad thing and how can we cut down on this salt intake yes a lot of us we add a little of salt yeah spicy we are good at it please cut down on your salt intake it's doing you more harm than good moderation is key you can add salt like i still add salt to my cooking but please be cautious of the quantity you add 
to that cooking. Now, not just that, as you add to your cooking, everything that you eat outside, be more aware of the quantity of salt or volume of salt that is in it because it impacts on our blood pressure. Some of us, we are not assessing healthcare, not because we can't afford it, but because of that mentality that... <sighs> I don't know how to put it in words. We just have formed a bad habit of not assessing healthcare as soon as possible. Now, an average Nigerian will postpone the time they will go to assess healthcare. Yes. Number one, don't wish it away. It will not disappear. If your body is telling you something, please listen to your body. Our bodies give us signs for a lot of things. If you're going to toilet too or frequently, like we win too often, going to the bathroom to pass urine too frequently, you're losing weight that you, you didn't really plan for. Suddenly you see yourself in machete. You're being thirsty too frequently, drinking and drinking and drinking. Please, your body is telling you there's a possibility that it might be diabetes. Can you please check it before it is too late? When the blood sugar is high, it does a lot of damage to the body. So by the time you begin to assess treatment, it's at the point where no help is, is almost impossible. And the complications have gone too deep to correct. Amputations and sores and all sorts of complications that reduce the quality of our lives are setting. So please don't wish those signs and symptoms away. Assess health care. Don't pray it away. Wisdom is profitable to direct. No, don't pray it away. Yes, our God is a mighty God. He has the power to heal. But he also gave wisdom to healthcare professionals. Yeah, that's why we are here. Please, don't just pray it away. While you're praying, do something. Do something. Go to the hospital. Now, don't just assess anybody. I know in Africa, some people will assess a pharmacist. I'm using the word pharmacist in quotes. Pharmacist that is not trained, not a pharmacist, somebody that is just privileged to sell medicine and they will get mixed certain medications that counteract each other. Instead of improving conditions, it is worsening conditions. I know if you think deep down you before you begin to get upset, you know what I'm saying is true. Please, can we assess healthcare quickly? Not just any kind of healthcare, appropriate healthcare quickly. Don't pray it away. Don't wish it away. Don't be in denial. Yes, some people say, no, it's not me. It can't be me. It won't happen. I refuse it. Sophia, I forbid it. Please don't. Don't. Don't do that to yourself. You're reducing the value of your life. You're reducing the value of your outcome. And finally, dear Africans, please take a break. Yes, especially for those of us in diaspora. We can't have higher pay. Can we please listen to our bodies? Don't work all the weekends and all the weekdays to gather all the money. As we can see by now, as an average adult, you see that it's not by how hard, it's how smart, really. Don't use your break time for another work. Just take a break and take a rest. The body is like a machine, any other machine. It needs servicing, it needs breaks, yes. So apart from eating healthy and doing exercises, one thing you can give your body is a break. One thing I can give my body is a break. Your annual leaves are enough time for, do, for doing extra shifts. Please take that annual leave time. Look for a way to improve your physical and psychological well-being. Take time out with your family. Take time out with yourself. Go for a bit of a holiday. Spend time. Don't go always to a holiday that will stress you. No. Take time, spoil yourself a little. You don't have to have the whole world to spoil yourself. You can decide on my one week annual leave. I will discover the parks around me. I'll just make myself a homemade picnic. I understand finances can be a constraint sometimes. You can make something in the house. Take your family along with you or go with your friends. Spend some time in nature, in the parks. Especially those of you abroad who can assess all of these things. Use your annual leave wisely. It's not all for work, work, work. And I know there are some times we are hard pressed and we have to do work but please can we stop converting the exchange rates and just love ourselves a bit it's okay for us to love ourselves it's okay sometimes to say no it's okay sometimes to be a bit selfish because if you die who will help out you need to stay alive there's no need for you to walk 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 and build a mansion back home that you will never be alive to go and live how would that be fair there's no need to put yourself so out there that you miss the growing up of your children, you miss the love of your life and all of that. Can we please 
take breaks. A word is enough for the wise. So let's inculcate those habits. That will make our black lives even matter the most. Till I see you next time. Before I say bye-bye, remember that red subscribe button is our residency permit because I would love to have you here once again. Click on the red subscribe button and the notification icon, that bell. Yes, click on it and click all. That way you get notifications for all my uploads. Can I say please share? Share this to your neighbor. Share this to your friends. Share this to your family. Share it on your status. Share it wherever shareable. Let's encourage one another. Our lives matter. Yes, black life matters, but we can do better. Till I see you next time, it's bye-bye from me.